Begin the technique by removing the cartilage from the glenoid face using the glenoid scrapette. Use the virtual implant positioning system to orient the guide wire using the VIP glenoid targeter for enhanced accuracy. Drive the guide pin into the glenoid until the laser mark is flush with the back of the targeter. The appropriate augment sizer is introduced over the guide pin. Once the area containing the greatest bony defect has been identified with the augment sizer, mark this location with a marking pen or electrocautery device. A mark 180 degrees opposite of this location should also be made, as both marks are used to assist in orienting the reamer during the glenoid reaming process. Insert the inner reamer shaft through the angled reamer sleeve. Couple the disposable angled reamer to the inner reamer shaft. A tactile coupling should be felt. Before attaching the reamer assembly to the powered hand equipment, place the orientation sleeve over the reamer sleeve to assist with rotational control while reaming. Insert the angled reamer assembly over the guide pin. Rotate the reamer assembly so the lines on the reamer shaft align to the marks that were made previously. The dotted line on the reamer shaft should be positioned opposite of the identified defect. Be careful to maintain alignment of the reamer to the marks on the glenoid. Continue reaming until the glenoid face has been reamed into a flat pane within the diameter of the selected reamer size. Place the augment trial matching the color and angle of the previously used instrumentation onto the modular handle. Insert the trial assembly over the guide wire and advance until the trial face is seated on the prepared glenoid surface. Assess the fit of the trial on the glenoid. To help determine if the trial and prepared glenoid surface made congruent contact, rotate the trial clockwise and counterclockwise. If not, repeat the reaming step until proper mating of the trial to glenoid surface can be achieved. Introduce the full wedge central post depth gauge over the guide wire. The measurement of the guide wire correlates to the length of central post drill that will be used, as well as the length of the modular central post implant. Select the drill size corresponding to the depth marking noted in the previous step. Attach the selected drill to the modular reamer shaft. Place the drill assembly over the guide wire and advance on power until the collar of the drill is flush with the glenoid face. When drilling is complete, remove the guide wire from the glenoid. On the back table, the selected base plate and central post are joined, gently placing the central post onto the base plate taper. The base plate assembly is placed into the base plate taper assembly press. The handle of the press is then rotated until the laser line within the window of the press indicates that enough force has been applied to couple the base plate components. The base plate is then removed from the press and placed onto the threaded base plate inserter. Advance the tip of the central post until it is slightly engaged in the prepared central hole within the glenoid face. Rotate the base plate until the maximum augmented portion of the base plate aligns to the electrocartery mark signifying the area of greatest bony deficit. Lightly impact with a mallet until the base plate is fully seated on the glenoid face. One may choose between placing locking fixed angle 5.5 mm or non-locking 4.5 mm variable angle screws within each of the peripheral screw holes. For non-locking screw preparation, the variable angle non-locking drill guide is inserted into a peripheral screw hole and directed toward the desired screw trajectory. The 3 mm drill bit is then used to create the hole for any peripheral screws. The numbers on the drill bit shaft should be noted as they indicate the length of the peripheral screw to be used. Alternatively, a surgeon may opt to use a sterile drill with color bands which correspond to different screw lengths. Ensure to use the corresponding reference card to match the colors with the correct corresponding lengths. The drill guide is removed from the base plate and the screw is inserted using the hex driver until it is fully seated within the base plate. For locking screws, thread the locking screw drill guide into the selected base plate hole. 3 mm drill is again used followed by the hex driver to seat the screw. 
The use of locking or non-locking screws and their placement within the base plate is based on surgeon preference. After the peripheral screws have been inserted, an over-the-base plate peripheral reamer must be used to ensure that all soft tissue and bone is cleared from around the circumference of the base plate. Attach the reamer to the manual driver handle and gently work around the base plate taper in a rotational fashion. A glenosphere is threaded onto the glenosphere inserter and introduced over the base plate taper. Provisional seating of the taper may be achieved by pushing the glenosphere onto the base plate using the inserter handle. Once seated, the inserter is unthreaded from the glenosphere and removed. The glenosphere is then impacted onto the base plate taper using several sharp mallet blows. Finally, the glenosphere locking screw is inserted through the threaded hole within the glenosphere and seated fully using the hex driver.